a few months ago I did a review of the Good Luck Buy Cheap Phantom Gimbal, uh, which not having a name we're going to have to carry on calling the Cheap Phantom Gimbal from Good Luck Buy. I had a couple of issues trying to use this with my GoPro 2 for FPV. The first was um, fitting it in the original configuration. I couldn't put my live out cable in without it being completely unbalanced. So that was one thing to fix. Another issue I had was that the legs on my from my quad, because they're at the extreme ends of the, the 450's frame, uh, were showing up in the video. So I had two things to fix. My original idea was to use the 30 pin connector on the back of the GoPro to build myself a cable, but I, I actually messed this up pretty quickly uh, with one blob of solder when I got a shell ready to make up um, a cable. So a couple of people suggested on the original video that I just flip the arm over and use that idea, which um, was brilliantly simple actually. So I went ahead uh, and did that, um, only to find that everything went a bit weird. Um, I eventually figured I'd better buy a new motor, uh, and this is what one of the original motors looked like if you ever need one. Here's a blurry photo. But on taking the motor out, um, literally the cable just fell out of it so I figured what I actually just had was a really dodgy connection uh, which was causing the motor to stutter. So putting that back together um, and this is why the, the this follow-up video has been a little while in coming I then managed to blow up the gimbal controller board this was because I'd taken um, from my receiver the 5 volt ground and signal cable and connected that to the tilt control on the controller and that 5 volt seemed to have just gone through and blew something up. Uh, so the tip there is only to connect the uh, signal cable, not even the ground. I thought I actually located the faulty component as being this um, voltage regulator here and I actually replaced that and, and thanks to Badlands for he had a couple of spares and, and sent me a bunch. I replaced it and it was intermittent it, it flew fine and then it would go haywire and the gimbal would dance all over the place like this. So I finally decided to just order a replacement controller board and a gyro sensor uh, and it was so cheap just to order this bit it was it was no big deal at all. It's much better than trying to figure out the original problem. Uh, so I'll, I'll go through the, the changes then I had to make uh, because I flipped that arm over. So here's the quad today and here's the landing gear on board and you see it's pretty much a bit of a crab. This is because in order to get the battery underneath um, I had to put it as was designed to go on a 550 rather than a 450 so uh, as such you have to be quite careful with the landings that it doesn't topple over this way. So that probably needs a little bit more explanation. I bought the very simple DJI landing gear which is basically just four plastic legs that screw in. The 450 holes would have put it in a position where I would have found it difficult to mount the gimbal and get my battery under. So you can put them out at a slightly different angle as pictured in the 550, which would be fine for the 550, but it's a bit thin and crab-like on the 450. However, everything fit in like that, so I just went with it. Uh, here's the GoPro, happily sitting with the arm reversed. So what we had to do is get our 3D printed bit to hold it on with this strap because the cuts in here only go down to here. Uh, I've had alternative uses of uh, using a hacksaw just to saw it out. And I've just put a couple of uh, rubber bands on here just to stop any slipping there. But... And I've skimmed over that one a little bit. Um, yes, immediately after flipping the legs round, what you notice is you can't easily use the strap to secure the GoPro very well. So after taking some measurements I drew up a very simple little strap holder in uh, SketchUp and sent this off to Neil who, who kindly printed it for me. Uh, stuck it on it, it all uh, fitted in quite nicely and now holds it nice and tight. But uh, as you can see it balances quite nicely still and of course we've got the FPV live out cable in. Uh, the other important thing as previously mentioned is just have the signal wire for any control you might want to do over the gimbal itself as that way it doesn't blow it up.
So as a test, I went back to the original park I flew for the original review just to see what the difference would look like. And um, straight away, we can see that we can't see any legs, which is great. We can pick up the props, which is why I'm angling down. And um, I still haven't changed over my Tyrannus sliders, so they're still a little bit jerky. Uh, you can see here that it's a pretty windy day. The, uh, the bushes are moving around but the gimbal seems to cope quite well. What uh, you really notice um, when flying uh, is that when the yaw uh, is pushed around by the wind, um, it really does sort of make a difference to the footage. It kind of looks like you're just weaving around a little bit. Um, I'm guessing this is where a hex might be a bit more stable. Um, but it, again, it doesn't look bad, and it's it's cheap and cheerful. GoPro 2 at 720 you can only use the wide angle which does distort uh, especially when you move the tilt up and down but I'm still pretty pleased with the footage Well, it's all flying, just flying around the park, but that's not really what gimbal flying is about. You kind of need to film something. So I went out to uh, a place called Hockley Viaduct, which is an old railway viaduct just outside Winchester, uh, which is now converted to a cycle route. And I thought that made a, a useful thing to try and film uh, and just to get the hang of how we could film using the gimbal. Straight away you can notice that uh, it's still quite tricky to get the props out of view and again the 720p60 on the GoPro 2 does curve everything including the bridge and of course it's, it should be a nice straight line. But once again I'm like well that's quite nice, I'm quite liking that, it's good for just panning and generally looking around. What I notice flying a gimbal is that I almost never fly in a straight line. I seem to want to fly in these arcs where I sort of centre the point of interest and then move around it, coming back up or down just as I reach the extents, which uh, I think seems like the most photogenic way of doing things, um, <laughs> even if it might not be. It kind of works for me. Once again, the yaw was quite tricky to keep under control, so we get a little bit of side-to-side -side movement. Um, against the wind, especially flying sideways, we got a, a few shakes onto the camera, but mostly the gimbal seems to handle the, the changes quite well. It's just trying to get it smooth enough to make it look good. Ironically, I had the best flight here on my very first battery, where uh, people across the bridge give me nice waves and things and uh, I managed to neglect to turn the GoPro on to record. I've got so many FPV flights that ended up with no recording or a still photo of my feet where I've got the function wrong or something. Well I've been mining on about 720p having those distortions so I gave it a go using the GoPro 2's 1080p mode um, this let me use the medium field of view, which as you can see I think gives a much more natural looking field of view and it doesn't have the distortion or sort of warping like, like the curvature of the earth has turned up pretty quickly like you can on the, the ultra wide. This problem seems to be um, with the GoPro 2 trying to get really stable non jello 1080p is somewhat of a black art. I don't know if this is because you can only use 30 frames a second uh, on 1080p 
not, not that it makes a difference in YouTube. Um, whereas the GoPro Hero 3, at least the silver and black, can do 1080p and 60 frames a second. It's either that or it's a different centre of the combination, but you seem to be able to get much more positive results on a GoPro 3. Uh, at the same time, we've had a GoPro 3 in the first place, so I wouldn't have spent all the time changing arms around and things like that. I'll keep experimenting with that and see if I can get it smoother. I definitely prefer the angle for this type of filming. Um, rushing about on trees, I really do like the uh, ultra-wide angle, but for things you want to look more cinematic or normal, the medium field of view seems really useful. Well, I hope that's of use to people that had got this gimbal or wondering how to connect it up to their camera, all that sort of stuff, and uh, I'll see you next time.